Welcome back y'all. My name is Tabitha and this is Cabot Cove Knits, a show where we talk knitting and all things Jessica Fletcher. Welcome, welcome. Little disclaimer, my dogs are outside and my kids are outside. They're actually right outside this wall playing on the side yard. So if you hear anything, um, my apologies in advance. This is real life. So Hello. I did not mean to wait this long to record a new episode. However, I got sick and was hacking a lung and snot and I'm already a hot mess. So I thought, let's not add influenza in the mess, into the mix. So this will be a shorter show today. I don't have a whole lot to <laughs> explain. I don't have a whole lot to talk about, maybe 20 minutes worth, but that's okay. So first things first, I have one FO to show. I did finish Wayland's teacher's gift and I already gave it to her and I have this little scarf that I made and finished um, and then I gave it to Paisley because I changed my mind on who this was going to be for. So. This was going to this was going to be Wayland's teacher's gift. However, I found out she does not like the color pink or yellow. She likes the colors yellow and black because she did her room uh, bee themed, but she doesn't like the colors like this together. So I was like, well, poop. And so then I started her other gift. Um, which was a, a blue shawl and she loved those colors so it was a much better choice and I'm glad that I didn't continue working with this and then gave this to her. This is just a simple, I don't even know what you would call it, I cast it on 60 and I was going to knit this with five skeins of yarn and then Kitchener stitch it and then make it like one big cowl where you do multiple loops but then when I found out she didn't like the colors I was like well I'm gonna stop now and not not waste the other yarn but not use the other yarn and use it for something else because I think it's pretty. This is Arcane Fiber Works, Fiber Arts. He's a dyer based out of Canada and this is, I don't think this color is available anymore but it was a bee color. I don't remember what it was called but it was a bee on a pink flower and it was really pretty. So I just cast it on 60 stitches, 60 stitches. I think on size US 7 and I did a, I don't know, a yarn over knit two together and then I just knitted plain old stockinet stitch until it was time for a new color or a new skein and I did the yarn over knit two together and then I added the other skein and then I just um, cast it off, bind it off. I was gonna sew it together and then Paisley said no, she would like it as a scarf. So, it will still get use even if it's not for the intended person. So, it's like a beekeeper scarf, Paisley likes to wear it, and it's super soft. I think this is worsted weight. I'm not sure, so. There's an FO that I didn't really plan on having, but Okay, it's really pretty. My light, it's dark. It's evening time here, and so my lights are all, you can probably see it a little better. So there, my only FO. I've been doing <coughs> really good and not casting on all the things and trying to stick with my main blanket and my sock. It's still hot. Imagine that. So my, I've only been working on two things and I took a break from this blanket two days ago and I wanted, I said, I'm going to finish a pair of socks because I was almost done with it and I just needed a brain break. This is the painting diamonds blanket by Sunny knitting with a, Sunny with a chance of knitting, I think. It's on Ravelry. I think it's Sunny with a Chance of Knitting. 
anyways, it's a blanket. I am knitting this for my husband's coworkers. They are getting married in August and I thought it would be nice to have a make them a wedding blanket as a gift. It's super easy lace pattern followed by stockinette stitch. I am going to, I'm almost done with the blanket according to the pattern. You do the stockinette part seven times. So I'm on five and then I'll just have two more of the stockinette. Of course I'll have lace and stockinette, then lace and stockinette, and then a border. But that's not going to be very big and I am not sure how cotton blocks. I've never knitted, I've made washcloths out of cotton, but I've never knitted like a thing that would need to be properly blocked out of cotton. So I don't think it'll grow, but I need this to like grow or be bigger. So I was re-reading the pattern and it said that it's, you could easy to increase or decrease to whatever size you needed. So what I might do is have 24, um, I'll see how big it is when I get to seven and I might keep going until 14 or 27 depending on how large it gets because it's really not that big now um, and then I'll have the border which would probably it looks like it adds another eight inches once you do the lace part in the border I have plenty of yarn I have two more um, <coughs> I have two more cakes of this, 875, 74 yards, and I'm almost, I'm, you know, I'll probably use up all of this and then, um, maybe even not, because I'm just now, I don't know, I have two more left, so I think I'll have enough. So I'll, I'm going to go past what I'm supposed to on the increases and then just see where I'm at size-wise because it's not very big. I don't know if cotton, please let me know if cotton grows or not like wool. I asked uh, Dr. Google and I got this weird AI answer and I was like, well, that doesn't help, but it's really not. So this is it folded in half and it's really not, I mean, two of my heads. I don't know. It's maybe four feet, four feet wide. That's not very big for a blanket. I don't know. You will soon learn that I don't know what I'm talking about. And I talk out of my butt a lot, but I have more of the yarn. So I'm not worried about, you know, I've got two more of these and I could get more if I had to, but I don't think I will. So yeah, lovely lovely pattern easy knit it's not i was really worried when i was um looking at this yarn because it's four strands of cotton you know equals one of these and i thought for sure i was gonna spend all my time you know catching threads and stuff but it, i had it has not been an issue i have been pleasantly surprised and i love the ombre i could go without the blue section I wish that this would have just faded into the light pink to the light green and skipped with the blue part completely because I thought that, that was kind of ugly. But I think it'll look okay once it's all done. And it's not for me, so, you know. Painting diamonds, sunny with a chance of knitting. I believe it's on Ravelry. It's a nice, easy pattern. She's got a couple other patterns that are really pretty too that I'm interested in down the road. All right, this is what I've been working on the last two days, fairly religiously, because I want to get it done. So yesterday I picked this up again and I was right, I was like right here when I picked it up yesterday and I'm already here on the foot part. I think I have a couple more inches on the foot and then I will do the decreases for the toe and this sucker will be done. I think this is my oldest whip on the needles. This is Hermione's Everyday Sock Free Pattern on Ravelry Knitted in Forbidden Fibers Spew Colorway. <coughs> That's a nice colorway. 
interesting how it works up with the pattern in there. So there's that. I've been wanting to, I wanted to get this done today and then we went to the library and I was knitting while at the library and then I got a book, which I'll talk about. And as soon as I got home from the library, I started the book and I've done literally nothing. I think I switched over laundry. I watered some of my garden and then I was like, I'm going to read. I made homemade mac and cheese with, um, what is it? Kielbasa for my kids for dinner. And I was like, easy. I had pork chops. Leftover pork chops. And they had homemade mac and cheese. Pioneer woman at mac and cheese. I do not do the egg part. I skip that because sometimes tempering eggs is a pain in the butt if it's especially if it scrambles but it's really not needed I've done it both ways and I can't taste the difference but you just do melted butter flour half and half or milk heavy cream whatever you have and then just whatever cheese you have and whatever spices you want you get that nice little <coughs> cheese gravy cheese sauce and then you add your mac and cheese and whatever meats you want that way it's one whole meal and you don't have to make any other food that's what my kids had for dinner. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And it's pretty cheap. Box of pasta. I wonder if you probably couldn't do it with rice. I have a bunch of rice. It might not taste the same. Anyways, so I will probably try and get this done tomorrow um, in the mornings now that summer is out. I knit while I drink my morning coffee. And so that's when I well, but I'll probably read now and then so I won't get any knitting, any knitting done because I'll just be reading. But my goal is to finish this tomorrow. I started this a couple years ago and I put them aside and I cleaned out my whips a couple months ago and I was like, I need to finish these. I need to get my knits, my knits, my whips in shape and get my life together, my knitting life together. So, super proud of myself that I've made a lot of progress, which I know doesn't seem like a lot, but for me, that's pretty good because I'm like already cast on all the things, order all the yarn, and I just can't do that right now. Although, Chicken Lady, she has a pre-order open for this beautiful rainbow yarn, and I'm like, oh, I wish I had a birthday coming up and I had some birthday money so I could get the, the I know a guy. It's gorgeous. It's white and it has just like these subtle little rainbows throughout. Absolutely gorgeous. But so I wanted to talk <coughs> before I get talking about my book, my murder she wrote book. I um bought the last summer Mystery Mouse Yarn Company did a Nancy Drew summer sock or summer club and I bought all of it because Paisley is an avid Nancy Drew reader fan and she wants me to make her something with all of these together. And I first thought, well, uh, <laughs> the easiest thing would be to blanket and I would just use up all the yarn. They don't really go together though, so I'm not sure how that would be. And then I thought, well, Nitty McPurley has a mini faucet sweater. And it's a, th it's a DK weight sweater. And this is fingering weight, so I would just hold it double. And it's a color work sweater with three different colors. But I'm not sure how, I mean, it might look really cool and it would just be an interesting, fun Nancy Drew sweater. But I'm not sure. I, you know, I probably couldn't do the minis. I would save the minis for something else, but let me know if you think it would be cool or not to do that sweater and these three colors. I think I'd have a good contrast. They just don't go all together. But my thought was I would make that sweater with these held double and I'd still have plenty of yarn left over. I could make, that might be the, a better way to see the colors. The blue, the top one, is not as dark as it's showing. Maybe that's better. I'm not sure. What do you think? So, 
my first thought was I could just make her a blanket, an easy peasy, you know, garter stitch blanket. I could even do um, a blanket in the round. And I have a blanket in the round pattern that I do all the time by um, Gingy Knits, the Velou blanket. I've made multiple of them, super easy, fun pattern. But I was like, well, I mean, she's gonna have a ton of blankets. And I was like, well, what if I made the mini, the wee faucet in her Nancy Drew collection? And then the leftovers I would make into like a little lovey because she's all about the loveys right now, which I think is super fun because she, she'll be 10 in August, but she still wants all the loveys and all the blankets for her doll. So do you think this would be too weird of a color pattern? I don't know. She wants all three of them together. So I guess that wouldn't make it so bad. So maybe a fall, my fall knitting. I could also, I don't know. I don't know. I need to look at the, I have the pattern. I need to look at a printout of it and see if I could even put the minis in there or not. And, or if I would just save the minis for the little blanket. Okay. So that's my knitting. I have zero um, yarn, new yarn to show. Zero. Zitch. Nada. But I have a book. Oh, I did not put enough sugar in my tea. Okay, we went to the library today. It is the first day of the summer reading program my kids do every year. And so we went to the library to sign up and get all the books. And I found I had not seen these before, which is dumb because I've walked through that section a hundred times. But I was like, I wonder if they have the Murder, She Wrote books there. Because I just found out that there is a fictional book that goes along with the show. And I was like, I'm going to see what they have. And they had, they had about 15 of the books at my local library. And so I just picked one. I picked Murder, She Wrote, The Ghost, and Mrs. Fletcher. And I started this today, and I'm already halfway through. And the whole time that I've been reading it, I'm like, I really wish they made, an, excuse me, a TV episode about this because it is a 10 out of 10. It is so, so good. And I'm a little sad. Maybe they have, and I just have, I have not seen all the episodes. I've seen seasons one through six in order. And then I don't have, um, and then that's when they stopped being free on freebie and I don't even know if I can watch it the first six seasons for free anymore but on Roku they have a Murder She Wrote channel that all it plays all day long is Murder She Wrote and so I've seen probably a good 80 to 90 percent of the whole 12 seasons I've seen all the t made for TV movies but I have seen most of the series so maybe there is hope or a chance that this really was a TV episode they turned it into a book because this is absolutely phenomenal. <coughs> um, Jessica is approached by a lady or she goes to the hospital to visit her friend Cliff. He is in the hospital because he's sick and he wants to tell her how he wants his, you know, affairs in order. And she's like, oh yeah, I'll do that, but you're not going to die. It's fine. Well, he dies and it's homicide. Of course. And so she's helping this real estate lady clear out his house. And there's a bunch of books. And I'm right in a good part where the handyman, and I think it's, if you haven't read this yet and you don't want to know, uh, stop watching me now. But the handyman was in the basement and Jessica went down to the basement and he's like, oh, I have a hammer. And he scared her. It was a 10 out of 10. Phenomenal. And so he's on a motorcycle. And, but, and nobody's seen him before. Nobody knows who he is. So she's like, hmm, are you really the handyman? Who are you? But Cliff's grandson, Elliot, is supposed to come from Alaska on a motorcycle to get his estate and all his stuff that he's inherited. I think, it hasn't been proven yet, that the handyman who broke into Cliff's house, allegedly, and um, 
was very creepy in the basement with Miss Fletcher. I think that that is really Cliff's grandson. And I just thought of that. And so I am feverishly reading, trying to figure out who Miss Mystery Handyman is that nobody knows and nobody recognizes. And everybody in Cabot Cove knows everybody. It's a really good book. Somebody please tell me that they really did this show, a TV show on this one. If not, it's okay. But it, I really, it's 10 out of 10. Highly recommend. Murder, She Wrote, The Ghost, and Mrs. Fletcher. It's, I just can't tell you how much, how good it is. And I know it's, it's probably super cheesy. And it's not like a profound, you know, like The Chronicles of Narnia or you know, Red Wall or something, you know, sophisticated. It's just a really good cheesy book about murder, which also sounds wrong, but whatever. It's Jessica Fletcher. So that's, that's what I've been doing all day today. I knitted on my sock for a few hours and went to the library. And now I've just been, uh, couch rotting, reading a book while my kids play Legos all around me. It's actually been rather lovely. I love lazy, do nothing, but the TV's off days. Because I'm still kind of sick. Not like contagious sick, you know, but like I still have a cold, which is really weird to have a cold in June. Oh, I think it's weird. We are on summer vacation. Praise the sweet Lord. School is out for summer. I have three weeks off of work. It's magical magical. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to, well, I'm going to be in my garden doing nothing, couch trotting, reading all the murder she wrote books, <laughs> some knitting while I drink my morning coffee. I go through weird phases where I'm like, okay, we're going to knit for like a month straight. Then we're going to read for a month straight. And I haven't figured out how to knit and read at the same time. I can knit obviously while I listen to the books, but I really love to read a book too. So I still haven't figured out how I can read a book with it not being on like Audible or that sort of thing and knit at the same time. I'm not that quite fancy yet. So I've been doing really good on my knitting plans. I've been reading more. I need to do a sit down and clean out my knitting bags. And I was thinking I was going to have that be my next episode, but then I was like, oh, I could just do a, a little what I've been doing and reading episode. So maybe my next episode, <coughs> when I'm 100% better, hopefully soon, because this cough is getting old, I'm going to clean out my whip bags, figure out what I'm going to frog. I have one blanket I'm going to frog. No, I have... Three things for sure I need to frog. I'm still going to knit with, you know, with them, but I just need to frog them. And maybe that'll be episode three. What would Jessica do? Would she frog it, keep it, burn it? I don't know. So I think that'll be my next episode. We'll have to plan. Maybe I'll have read more. I've got, this is, I only got this book for the Murder, She Wrote series. And then I got a couple other Knitting fiction books. I got, I found this Knit One, Kill Two. That's a murder mystery knitting book. I've tried reading it before, but I think I'm going to get into it this time. And then I got A Stash of One Own, A Stash of One Own, which I've already read, but I really enjoy it. It's a, like short stories about people's stashes, <coughs> yarn stashes. And then I got The Curse of the Boyfriend Sweater which is another good short stories um, about knitters. And then I got a brand new uh, romance novel. And it reminded me, when I read the jacket of it, it reminded me of Debbie Maycomber's, kind of her Christmas um, romance books. Those are my favorites. Anything by Debbie Maycomber plus Christmas. So I'm kind of hoping it'll be like that, although I'm a little worried it might get a little raunchy because one thing that I've noticed is a lot of the new romance novels, they get a little, a little heated. And sometimes that's not your thing. And if that is your thing, then great. Sometimes it's not. And so I'm hoping this is more of the cheesy Hallmark romance and not the other romance. But 
we will find out. So, all right. I'm out of things to talk about and I want to go read. So until next time, y'all. Ciao.